Harvard graduate student wearing a keffiyeh, a scarf that is uh, of Palestinian origin, says they were chased down and harassed on campus by the wife of Harvard Kennedy School professor and former Obama administration advisor Jason Furman. Let's take a look at this viral video. Between you and people who wanted to murder you. Hi, camera. Thank you for walking through neighborhoods and making families feel unsafe with your with your tourist scarf. Palestine, Palestinians felt pretty unsafe when Israelis occupied their country, you know. I'm glad you're so proud of, of, of slaughtering of civilians. I'm not. If you couldn't hear, she said, uh, thank you for walking through my neighborhood and making me feel unsafe with your terrorist scarf. Glenn Greenwald weighed in on the whole mess, tweeting, if a Jewish student at Harvard wearing religious garb had been insulted and assaulted this way by the wife of a Harvard professor and former Obama official, it'd not only be national news, but both parties would convene congressional hearings about it. Who is unsafe in the U.S.? Now, this is the second time um, in less than a month that a former Obama official uh, has been caught engaging in behavior that many people are characterizing as uh, untoward. I don't want to project my, my characterization onto it. But ex-Obama advisor Stuart Seldowitz uh, very famously was caught by a halal cart vendor in New York on several different occasions, different times a day, different outfits on different occasions, uh, engaging in Islamophobic rants at uh, this halal cart vendor. I think we have a little bit of that footage as well as a reminder. That, see, that just shows how ignorant you are, because your Muhammad was a rapist. It says in the in the hadith in, oh, your, in your holy book. Oh Muhammad. What? Oh Muhammad. Muhammad, your your prophet. You know who he is. My prophet? Yeah. He was a rapist. He raped Aisha. Does it say that in the hadith or not? You know that? I just speak English. What? No English. You don't speak English? What do you speak? What do you speak? Do you speak Arabic? The language of the Quran? The Holy Quran that some some people use as a toilet. <laughs> what do you think of that? People who use the to the Quran as a toilet. Does it bother you? <laughs> Does it bother you? Tell me the truth. I don't speak English. You don't speak English? Ah, that's too bad. That's why you're selling food in a, in a food cart because you're in, you're ignorant. You should learn English. It'll help you. Of now, Stuart Seldowitz, he served as deputy director of the U.S. State Department's Office of Israel and Palestinian Affairs. He was arrested on ch charges of aggravated harassment after these clips came to light. Um, but many people are noting that this two is a co coincidence, maybe three becomes a pattern. Is it surprising that so many former Obama senior advisors have now been caught engaging what, in what I would characterize as harassment of people because they are Arab or because they are presenting wearing Arab garb? In the case of the guy at the, um, at the, the food cart, um, yeah, that's a pretty long clip where he clearly says uh, a lot of harassing things. And as you noted, the police have taken action, so that seems to be working itself out in a way that makes sense. As for the, the, the main reason we're talking about this, the, the clip of the, uh, the Harvard professor's wife, look, I'm just going to say I am very reluctant to take, to judge, to, to evaluate and make any strong view on a, a 16 second clip. Um, obviously, you shouldn't say what we heard on that clip about um, some, so no one should be targeted or harassed or delegitimized for, for the garb they're wearing, for wearing uh, a Palestinian scarf. And if it is as it appears, that was a bad action. I don't know what preceded that clip. I don't know what came after it. I'm very, especially after the whole Covington kids uh, debacle from years ago, I would, I would just be, I would be not willing at this point to give much of more of a, of a opinion on it. It's not, I don't know, I don't know what happened up yeah. to there. I don't know. The, and, you know, like, people behave badly um, in public. They embarrass themselves. Um, you know, the kind of Karen speak to the manager type thing. 
you know, we get now that we have cameras everywhere, we, you know, we see people get into fights over parking spaces and getting cutting in front of me in the line in the grocery store. And um, you know what? It's it's nasty and it's ugly. And but I don't know that you know, sticking the entire world to condemn and destroy over it is always necessarily a good idea. I would like to see. I mean, I I, I would wonder what led up to this. Well, uh, I take your point, but I think there's also a lot you can analyze that's said by the woman. She articulates, uh, uh, Eve Gerber, she articulates her own frustration in the context of the video. Mm -hmm. So we're not just interpreting kind of a stare off the way we did, were with the Covington video. She specifically says, you made me feel unsafe by walking down the street wearing your terrorist scarf. So there's many components to that. One, the idea that the presence of another human being, she doesn't accuse her of protesting her house, of shouting at her, of menacing her. She says, walking down my street, wearing clothing that I identify with terrorism is making me unsafe. So the second part of that is obviously calling a scarf that is emblematic of the Palestinian freedom struggle and has no ties to terrorism. Um, a terrorist scarf. It is that kind of conflating of what it means to be Arab or Muslim with what it means to be a terrorist that I think is pretty foundationally a, a sort of a, a, a bigotry. And it's hard to really get around that. And I think the third piece of this, which has frustrated so many people like Glenn Greenwald, is how quickly the kind of safety is in that so many people on the right, not that she's on the right, she again, um, her husband was an Obama advisor, but so many people on the right criticize at college campuses the idea that the presence of a certain kinds of words or language for violence is now being really deployed to make the case that Jewish students or, or Jewish faculty members or wives of faculty members apparently feel unsafe because of the mere presence of um, Arab students. We don't actually know the the nationality of the woman walking down the street. She she might not even have been Arab or Muslim at all. She could have just been wearing the kifya, which was being characterized as this woman as a threat in and of itself. And I think the concern is, is this emblematic of what's going on on campuses where we are having congressional hearings to talk about the safety of Jewish students. We are having um, vigils with congressmen uh, coming to uh, commemorate the deaths of one side of this, but not the other side of the horrible tragedies that have been unfolding in Israel and Gaza, and where we have had resolutions passed in the House to conflate anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, and a resolution passed to censure Rashida Tlaib at the same time that we have had three Palestinian-American college students shot, one of whom is paralyzed uh, completely from the waist down, and much, much less attention to that kind of violence or the harassment that this uh, young student uh, faced here on the street. Yeah, just walking down the street is, does not make people—I mean, it doesn't matter if you feel unsafe. People have the right to walk down the street. So I, too, have despaired of the trend of, uh, of safetyism being used uh, to delegitimize um, free speech. Obviously, we have a long— um, history of that, have surveys of college students saying, well, if I feel unsafe, then free speech no longer applies. Well, if it's hate, I support free speech, but if it's hate speech, then, you know, that could make someone feel targeted. And, you know, that going down the list of, of gender reasons and sexuality reasons and race reasons, um, this is a manifestation of that. But like I said, I don't know. It's a short clip. So there was a little bit of a um, <laughs> the the, stu the young woman in the clip chose to remain anonymous. Um, but this is the testimony again. We'll see if Gerber has anything to say about this. Of course, we'll follow up if she pushes back in any way. Um, she deserves to be heard as well. But the additional context was th as follows. Um, She's, the young woman says Gerber was driving when she saw her walking by in a kifia, got out of her car to follow her. The student felt compelled to share the video uh, after the horrific shooting of three Palestinian students um, in Burlington, Vermont. So apparently she was driving. It wasn't even that she was walking by her house, that the student was walking by her house or in her neighborhood. She was driving by and got out and decided to, to walk chase um, behind uh, the Palestinian students. So do stick around for more Rising after this, and we'll be back with more updates on this story as they emerge.